Hello everyone, my name is LaPrecious and welcome to my channel, Let's Talk with LaPrecious. So today I will be talking to you all about how I think that we as African Americans should eat African food as opposed to soul food. Now I'm sure many of you may be wondering why am I doing a video about this and why do I think that African Americans should eat African food as opposed to African American food. Well the reason why I believe that we should is because how can we claim to be proud African Americans when we won't even eat food from Africa, which is a continent that we come from? Because when you look at the African American cuisine, it's consisted of fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, collard greens, pinto beans, fried fish, um, I believe it's chitlins, fatback, greens and cornbread you know just a lot of different things but when you think about it a lot of these foods didn't even come from Africa because as an African-American you know I grew up in an African-American home and you know just like any other black person that grew up black and in a black home you know they heard from their grandparents and other elders that the reason why we eat chitlins and fat back and some of this other food is because when we were slaves the slave masters ate the whole food and they just gave us the scraps or whatever was left over from what they had and we made a meal out of it but my thing is is that why is it that now since we know that that food is scraps and since we know that that food isn't healthy and since we know that that was a degradable way of eating and a degradable way of giving somebody food why do we still eat like that because my thing is is that i believe that as african americans we should eat foods that came from our homeland, which is Africa. Because when you think about the African American cuisine and even the African way of li African American way of life, we live in assimilated we live in a very assimilated way and we eat in a very assimilated way because I've noticed the conflicts that have been between different races with African Americans is that when you look at all the other ethnic groups in the United States, whether they be Latino or Asian or Native American or Middle Eastern, they all have a set culture. They all have a culture that has a hierarchy. They all have a culture that has a language. They all have a culture that has set standards. And they all have a culture that has a set identity. As far as African Americans, we really don't have one. The one that we have is an assimilated one because since we were stripped away from what we knew and from what we were taught, you know, as slaves and from what we were left with, we pretty much made do with that. And I believe now that's why some African Americans have conflicts with other races and sometimes we even have conflicts within ourselves is because we don't know who we are as a people. Because I believe that African Americans were not bad people. You know, we made a lot of accomplishments while living in this country. We made a lot of accomplishments in hip hop and R and B in politics in literature we we've made our mark in a lot of different areas within within this country but i believe that since we've already made our mark i think it'll be best for us to go back to our roots and discover who we are so that we can not only be an accomplished people but be a self-aware people because to me it doesn't make sense to say that you're a proud african-american or a proud black person and you wearing kente cloth and a dashiki but you don't even know what African country you come from or what African land your ancestors came from. And my thing is, is that I've noticed that a lot of African Americans, they seem to have a very snobby outlook and a very standoffish way of looking at Africa. Because I've heard of black people saying, well, um, I wasn't born in a hut or I wasn't born in a tent or in the jungle, you know, neck, you know, real rude and disrespectful types of references to Africa because a lot of people only like to see Africa for the way they see it in the news and on National Geographic instead of going online, you know, going on YouTube or going to the library and figuring out what Africa really looks like the way that it is, the way that, you know, facts say that it is. And, you know, my thing is, is that if you're going to be a proud African person or a proud black person, why not discover what your blackness is or where your blackness came from and stand on that? Now, I do know, and I remember that Essence, they did an article on this a while back. It seems that within the African diaspora, even though we're all black, we still have those conflicts in between us because there's a little tiff between African Americans and Caribbeans. There's a tiff between African Americans and Africans and there's a tiff between 
African Americans and Afro Latinos. And I believe it's because of that lack of structure that the African Americans have within our own culture. Because, you know, like I said before, all the other ethnic groups, they have that structured culture. You know, they have a language, they have a food, they have an identity, they have a hierarchy. You know, they just have levels to that culture that makes them who they are. And we as African Americans, we've just assimilated to what we've been given because that's all we were. We, that's all that we were really allowed to know and allowed to have. And that's kind of what we just pretty much had to settle with. And I believe that between African Americans and Caribbeans, and I know that all Caribbeans are not of African descent because you have Lebanese, you have Spanish, you have Chinese, you have Indian, and you have um, mixed Caribbeans, but I'm talking about the Afro Caribbeans. And I believe the reason why there's tiffs between the African Americans and Afro Caribbeans and Afro Latinos and Africans and even Afro Europeans is because of that lack of a culture that we have. But not only that, but I believe that there is some snobbiness that comes from the other communities towards African Americans because in a lot of cultures, they value education. In a lot of cultures, they value tradition. In a lot of cultures, they value family. In a lot of cultures, they value marriage and they value structured child rearing. And we all know that in a lot of African American homes, there's either no mother present or no father present. There's no structure of religion. There's no structure of a belief system. You know, there's just a lot of brokenness that's common in a lot of African-American families. We're in a lot of non-African-American households. That's non-existent. And not only is it non-existent, but it's not tolerated. And I believe that due to other cultures being taught that that's not right and that's not you know, the moral thing to do, and that's not the moral way to be. That's why they have that snobbiness, that snobbish look towards African Americans when it comes to so many different things. And not only that, but there seems to be a lot of lack of communication in between other ethnicities and African Americans. Because for whatever reason, I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent from going when it comes to talking to about food and then talking about other things, but it'll all come back to full circle by the end of this video. But I do believe that if African Americans, and I'm not going to put all the blame on African Americans, but I believe that if African Americans took the time to branch out towards other communities and other ethnicities, there would be less conflict and there would be less trouble and there would be less friction in between ethnic groups when it comes to things like food and language and culture and structure and family and I also believe that if other ethnic groups will reach out to us and start talking to us and conversating with us and get to know us and getting to understand who we are there will be less conflict because for whatever reason there just seems to be such a there just seems to be such a hate and I don't really understand where that hate has come from for either being black or for being dark skinned. Because when you think about it, every per every every group of color has been taught in some way or some form that being black or that being dark skinned is bad. Because in the African American community, we learned it through slavery. In the Latino community, they learned it in slavery. In the African community, they learned it from colonization. In the Asian community, they learned it from colonization. And there's just so many different ways and so many different, um, there's just so many different things and ways that people have just learned that being black and being dark is so bad to the point where it just doesn't make sense. Because when it's all said and done, being black and being dark skinned is just like being any other color. It's just a color, it's just a hue, it's just a shade, just like being light, dark, uh, brown, purple, or whatever color you consider yourself to be is. And it just doesn't make sense why there's just such a hate and such a discontentment and there's just such a just such oppression towards people that are dark skin or brown skin and just happen to be a person of color, whether dark or light. But um, going back around when it comes to the food, you know, that, that was just something that was just on my mind. Like, it doesn't make sense how we as African Americans, we've come so far as a people and we have all this knowledge that why are we still 
why why do we still eat soul food you know these are foods that we gathered up from slavery because we didn't have the knowledge that we have now to know the difference between our home foods and you know slave food and this that and the third and not only that but when you look at African American food it's not really cooked that healthy because we cook it in a lot of salt grease and sugar and all these other things that just aren't good and I'm not saying that other cuisines aren't cooked in healthier ways because you know a lot of other people they cook with salt grease and sugar too but you know that was just the idea that I have and I'm sure that I'm not the only person that's thought about this but you know because I've actually changed my diet because I personally don't eat American food and when I say American food like fries and hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff like that because a lot of that stuff is processed is is greasy is sleazy it's not real it's filled with all of this junk and it's just not good for you and what i've noticed with the international cuisines when you either cook it yourself or when you go to the authentic restaurants they tend to cook it a lot healthier and they tend to use real food so i know that what i eat from there I don't have to worry about gaining, you know, 15 pounds, you know, after eating it. I don't have to worry about, you know, being stuffed to the point where I'm not going to eat for the next few days because this one meal has all this stuff in it that it makes me feel like I can't eat anything for the next two days. You know, you get what I'm saying? And I hate eating like that because, you know, when you eat, you want to feel comfortable, you want to feel good, and you want to feel sick and bloated and just you know, all over the place. And so, you know, I've decided to take a different approach when it comes to food and, you know, eat more cleaner by eating more fruits and more vegetables and just being more aware and more open-minded when it comes to food. Because it's amazing how a lot of different cuisines have a different approach to cooking and eating things and how they could be a lot better and a lot healthier than the things that we're used to eating, especially in America. So um, if you like this video, please like it. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. Have a good day. Bye.